I'm sitting here, not a lighting professional, and trying to imagine a consumer of lighting five years from now, I mean even today, but let's say five years from now, when there are so many options. And users get their input on what should I do, I think probably from what, three basic sources. Number one, of course, would be lighting designers that probably use the least. Uh, people who install lighting and people who sell lighting. How are they going to know, especially the latter two, anything? All things considered. How are people going to get good advice? We're coming to a new generation of decision makers. In my sense is they're going to reach a decision the same way they reach a decision right now. It's behind a computer on the web. They will edu educate themselves on the web. They'll know more about their lighting fixture before you go in and present it to them, including the price. Okay, so to that point, and Jay, you kind of mentioned earlier that the channels are going to be the same. The same. I kind of agree with Charlie. The young people, my kids, they don't want a rep to come in and take an hour of their time showing something. They're going to go on the internet and learn it themselves, but watch a video, see some comparisons, sure. and they're going to make a decision. To light their house. To yeah, light their house, and I think businesses for as well. A 15 story office building. I, to be honest with you, I think there gets to be the end user education to the point of dangerous sometimes, where lighting is so taken for granted as easy that really a lot of people not qualified to start weighing in on what should be put in tend to get involved in it, cheapen it down, value engineer it to start um, all of a sudden taking away a lot of the, the lighting integrity. I think the role of the designer, specifier, consulting engineer, the experts that we have in the value chain now is only going to continue to become more and more valuable and I think the markets ultimately, if there's a lighting designers that continue to design packages that come out looking and performing terribly, will go out of business. And I think in the end, the expected by value chain that's been around, as in particular now that lighting is becoming more and more complex, there's greater and greater uh, knowledge base needed to understand how it all works together, not just, okay, put this fixture here. I mean, there's, there's really a lot to a lighting package in a true commercial environment. So, so there's still room, and all these channels about have to be paid for. And you're saying that the end user is willing to pay for that rep to come in and explain it, and for that lighting design. If that end user is a commercial, is a hotel, is a you know a Morgan Stanley, or I don't know if they're still in business. Right. So but some, some the, the big guys are going to do it. But what about the mid-sized guys? What about the guy that owns a uh, factory or, or a distribution center in a small town? I think that's a big problem in that what the retrofit industry. Trust me, I'm, I'm 25 right. years in the retrofit industry, right. so I've lived this. Um, I think we way too easily allow somebody to come into the industry, buy a copy of AGI 32 and put themselves up as a, I'm a lighting expert. And I've seen more retrofits that are horrendous from glare, from lousy lighting, from, from even dangerous uh, because of completely unqualified people specifying light. Let's go to Jim and then Mark. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the retrofit in the, the small and medium building is, is a big nut to crack because it's a, a very significant uh, uh, energy use. You know, the average size building in this country is like 15,000 square feet, so we're not talking about the, the New York Times and, and higher state buildings in the world. We're talking about these small buildings that have, you know, you're not going to have uh, an architect and uh, uh, design team involved in that retrofit. Uh, you know, the small business owner wants to go to Home Depot to get his solution like he does for his home, right? Uh, well, the Department of Energy has recognized this. They have uh, one of their uh, uh, what they call hubs, uh, energy hubs, is the uh, energy efficient building hub that's based in the Navy Yard in Philadelphia. And its primary goal is to figure out how to uh, uh, assist the small building owner, uh, buildings under 250,000 square feet, uh, to make those decisions of the lighting is part of it, certainly, but, but do I put a new roof on my building? Do I, I change uh, the windows on my building? Do I put a new HVAC system in the building? Or, or do, I, uh, do I change the lighting? In, in the, the, the work at the EED Hub, uh, lighting is always sort of a default, uh, default that, yes, we, 
we're going to do a lighting retrofit because that's very important. And how do we combine that and integrate that with these other things that have to be done? But at the same time, uh, how do you inform that end user? That's what the Department of Energy is charged with, the hub with the doing, is figuring out how to get that information out. And I think that information is more important than ever because of the pace of change that we have in our industry right now. Um, and we're seeing a, a shift in how that education is being provided. And Terry, to your point, it, this has been mostly a B2B industry. We talk amongst ourselves. It's business to business, right? There hasn't been a lot of consumer involvement, but this is an opportunity now because consumers have all heard about the LED light. You know, and most of them have heard that it's the best light ever and they should all change. Then they see the price and you know, kind of there's some hesitation. But because of the complexity, as Jane mentioned, there's more of a need for education than ever, and certainly because of the pace of change. And the traditional suppliers of education for the lighting industry have been the manufacturers. There's not a lot of academic suppliers. That they do a great job of in-depth training of specific skill sets, but not general training. So it's been manufacturers that have trained distributors and electricians and such things. And when we look at the, the great educational facilities like Mary Beth's at Neela Park, we see them starting to morph to online presence. We've got a few online courses, right? right. Sure. And your customers are demanding distributors, for example, that they don't send their people anymore, that you put on some CEU classes or just some yeah, training sure. classes on specific types of educational material for lighting and general use. And it makes it more accessible for them. So they can be a better informed customer. But to Jay's point, in the large projects, it's going to stay in the market channel it's been for a long time because people aren't going to make that effort. They're going to hire some professional to do it. Very bad. And, and, and I think this really also underscores that depending on the application, is it commercial, is it, is it residential, that it really makes room for all the stakeholders that currently are in, in the business right now. You know, let's not forget the distributor partners. They're the ones calling on some of these smaller to medium-sized types of locations. They have the support of their manufacturing partners to make some suggestions, to call on, get extra design help. If it's a major retrofit or maybe just a, a simple, you know, lighting upgrade, uh, if, if you will, maybe just changing the light source. So uh, I think that there's room for different types of communication vehicles and really room for all the stakeholders that are packaging solutions. But, but it's changed. I'm doing it right now, as a matter of fact. Um, I have a church project. The local distributor, well-meaning, reasonably well-trained, came in, did a retrofit of the church. But somehow, spotlights got put in where there were floodlights, uh, the wrong wattage, a little more light, wrong color, this, that, and the other thing. So I think as a lighting designer now, my job security has gone up because I now got to go in and fix it. But the cost to fix it has also gone up. I used to be able to take along a carton of MR16s of different distributions and wattages and do a lot of fixing by hand. Can't do that now. I have got to go back to that distributor and say, we've got to switch out these lamps. I need flood lamps or spot lamps because that's a $30 or $40 item and that's not going to be done easily. So the, the whole situation has changed, but I think lighting designers have got to have a role here. Well, this has been a challenge for the Illuminating Engineering Society forever. It doesn't have anything to do with the technologies. It has to do with getting beyond our own um, businesses but, but, but to and our own point, society. To, to, to Terry's point, they could make a mistake and they could just change a light bulb. Well, remember, now they can. Yeah. Now it's, it's much more serious. Remember, too, where the consumer is going on the web for this information. They're going to house, they're going to pin interest, they're not going to spec sheets for lighting fixtures. <laughs>